Alright guys, how you doing? It's Rabia again. Hope you are all good. You might have noticed, sat to my right hand side is the lovely Silverback Amplifier by Victory Amplification. This is Rob's signature amp. I'm very proud of my friend Robert for being able to release such an awesome amplifier. And I, when I say awesome amplifier, I'm genuinely serious. It's a really good amp. A little bit of background, obviously you know Victory um, is a British amplifier company and the genius that is Martin Kidd designs all the amplifiers and he gets that beautiful tone that we all know and love. Guthrie now endorses Victory, which is beautiful because he's an amazing player. And you know, Rob got his signature amplifier made, which I think is just awesome. Two channel amplifier, it's 50 watts, but you can switch it down. We've got a high and a low output setting, which is really nice. You know, people that know Rob well enough will be able to hear his favourite tones in the amplifier. Um, you know, it goes from that sort of JCM 800 sound, like it's got that Soldano kind of soaring lead tone and stuff like that, and you know, probably some other stuff in there. Um, and the, there's really nice features like the trap door on the top so you can change the valves nice and quick, which is just ingenious really. I think it's a really cool idea, so well done Rob. And this lovely uh, guard that you can put in front of the controls so that it doesn't get knocked about in transit, which is cool. So yeah, it's funny. Um, I remember when Rob gave me a call a few years a few years ago now, when he first sort of got involved with Victor and he said, oh, I'm gonna get to design an amplifier. You know, what you know, got any ideas? And I mean, to be fair, I, I love design in general, I love designing things. A few of my favourite amplifiers, I took inspiration from them when I sort of suggested certain elements of this amplifier, such as you know, different gain stages on both channels that you can switch on the ground. So on the clean channel, you have a separate gain stage to make it into a crunch, and on the overdrive channel, you have a separate gain stage to take it to a boost, which is really nice. So it was nice to see that you know some of my ideas were put across into this. And also, the controllable effects loop on the back, you've got an effects loop with a dry wet dial, and for me, that's one of the most important things on an amplifier, because when you don't have an effects loop level, it just comes through at one volume, and especially if you're trying to do sort of different dynamics within your music, sometimes that can be a nuisance when it's just one volume. So for me, if I ever get to design my amplifier, it's going to have its own controllable effects loop. But on this amplifier, um, that was another feature that, um, that I had it put on. So it's really nice as well to have some of my ideas come across with this amplifier. Um, but yeah, let's hear how it sounds. I'm using the same guitar again with the parallel axis because it's just a good guitar, has a lot of versatility, so it'll show off the amp. So there we go. It's quite a high output pickup, so it's, it's breaking up a bit, so let's move across to the middle and see what that sounds like. So it's nice, nice clean ch channel, you know, it's, it's nice and smooth, it's got a lot of mid-range as well, I mean, to be fair, because it's a shared EQ across both channels, you do have to, in a way, make a sacrifice whether you're going to go for that kind of sweet overdrive channel, you know, then you, your, uh, your clean channel, obviously, has to share the same EQ, so sometimes you're going to find a bit of difficulty getting the exact tones that you want, so you might use something on the ground. 
But if I was going to use a bit of delay now, I'll put the flash back in with the clean channel and we can get some nice atmospheres. I'm going to coil tap it and just mess around and see what we get. just a quick insight into the clean channel. Now obviously I'm perfectly aware that uh, you know this amplifier wasn't 100% dedicated to its clean channel. Obviously the clean channel has to sound nice but you know Rob is a you know he's a shred player, loves his lead, all that kind of stuff so not that he wouldn't use a clean channel but I don't think it gets used anywhere near as much as the crunch and the overdrive so um, let me uh, show you something cool about the clean channel. So as I said before, the whole idea behind the gain stages was that you can stay on the same channel but you could press something on the floor, i.e. the foot switch, which I don't have here, but it's going to add more gain to the same channel. I love that about amplifiers, so when Rob said, what can we do with this, I thought that was a great idea. So let me pull out the clean channel knob and you'll see what happens. Eh. So obviously it's a lot easier if, you're, if you've got the pedal on the ground because you don't have to try and do the push-pull thing. But anyway, so the gain's in the same place it was on the clean, but we've just pulled the knob out to give it the uh, crunch sound. Bridge pickup. channel it's a lovely crunch uh, nice it gives me a sort of reminds me of that sort of JCM 800 e sound on a low gain sort of not low gain but you know like held back sort of feel reminds me of the crunch channel on the JVM as well it's got a similar sort of chewy texture to it this would really handle a uh, tube screamer so I'm gonna put the spark on see what it does Screamer on the crunch channel. That's a really nice tone. Uh, I really enjoy that actually. Um, let's call a tap it and see what else we can get from it. nice it's um to be fair <clears throat> i mean i would probably have to push the gain a bit more to get the kind of responsiveness that i like from a crunch channel uh, and the gain is on halfway but 
I guess at the same time we are going up in gain stages. The idea behind the gain stages, uh, and I'm pretty sure on this amp it's the same thing, is to simulate the volume control on your guitar because that, uh, that's how I like the gain stages to work. I think that's why the JVM is good and I think that's why this is a really good amplifier as well because what it allows you to do is start on your clean, move up to crunch with a bit more on your volume and then move up to your overdrive and then your gain boost so it's as if you're turning your volume control all the way up on an overdriven amplifier. The benefits of that are there's more dynamic range and also you're not going to get that noise in the background from it wanting to be on full full blown distortion. Anyway, let's move across now to the overdrive channel. This is without the boost. Here we go. Again, it does feel, I mean, I haven't got the gain very high because when the boost kicks in, you want to notice a difference, but the gain's on about 11 o'clock, and yeah, I mean, it does sound really nice. It's really good for that rhythm sound. So I, you know, I could have loads of fun with that. If I was playing live, I'd probably push the gain up a bit more um, for my rhythm sound, uh, just to give me a little bit more in the chuggy end of things. I probably wouldn't really play lead on this setting because there's not enough sustain, but um, it's really, really good for that saturated chord sound. <laughs> sounds with the uh, neck pickup on this channel it's got a nice bluesy bite to it so I enjoy that about it I'm gonna chuck on a bit of flashback and go back to the bridge and then play some of that kind of uh, atmospheric stuff that I enjoy just to see how it sounds <laughs> with the flashback. I've got the level set pretty high on the FX loop on the back so 
you do get a lot of delay with that. But I really enjoy it. I think it's really, it's got, it's got that British tone, but it's a bit smoother in the mid-range. And obviously it's a British hand-wired amplifier, so it's, you know, top, top, top notch in terms of it's truly, you know, proper class A amp. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's got that sort of British, sort of martially brittly tone a bit. That's the way it's voiced, and that's what Rob kind of likes. But um, it's smoother in the it's smoother in the mid range, which is something quite common of the Victory amp range. One thing that I must say that I'm not a huge fan of personally, which is why I've opted for the Panama cab as well, and I've rolled the bass pretty much all the way off, is because I'm it, it's got a lot of low end as this amplifier. Something I have noticed about Victory amplifiers is they're um, you know they're not that you can play some really nice you know um, chordy stuff, saturated heavy chords and stuff. But as a rhythm amplifier, they they do their voice quite dark. So what you get is a, a lot of when you're trying to chug and stuff, it doesn't have the definition that that I'd look for in a in an amplifier for rhythm sounds. Um, and I've noticed that a lot of the Victory players are lead players, and so that's why their voice dark is because when you've got a lot more low end and you're playing um, lead, you want to have the weight behind it. You want to have that oomph behind each note that you pick for when you play. And it makes sense. Um, so, you know, for that reason, I'd say that they're doing the right thing. So purely in the interest of fairness, I thought I would pair up the silver back with the 212 that it's meant to go with. Or optionally, you can also have the 412. Uh, I believe they're loaded with V30s. Um, and yeah, I think one of the things I've noticed, again, like I said, the amp itself is voiced really reasonably dark, or at least the Victory range is. Uh, Rob's is actually the brightest of the range, um, but the cabs also add to that, so they're very boomy, very bassy. This is lovely for lead, but again, for playing sort of rhythm and stuff like that, you can find that it can start to chew up a bit. But I'm not saying anything other than, let's try it out. So, Silverback into its Victory 212.
let's move across to the the sound that I know this is why Rob loves this amplifier. So I'm going to put the gain boost on now. Um, overdrive gain is at halfway and I've only put the boost on just above sort of nine o'clock so it will definitely be gaining but um, this is Rob's tone right now. I, I can't play like Rob um, because I'm not Rob but um, yeah this is, the, this is the channel. So here goes the gain boost. <laughs> sound of that. The boost channel on top of the overdrive channel um, is definitely where this amp sounds the best in my opinion. It's, it's got a lot of sustain, it's really the gain sound, you know, the tones that really helps you play, you know, it gives you a lot of dynamic variation, you can really pull out some sick squeals on it and it just allows you to, you know, just shred and just whale and that's exactly what Rob does best. So I think this is the perfect amp for him. Um, for me, personally, the tone of the amplifier is just a little bit on the gainy side in terms of it, it, the type of overdrive that it is, is is definitely like that kind of tiny terror tone that Rob used a lot for a lot of years. And you can really hear that, I think, in the, in the tone of the amplifier. Um, for me, I, I prefer a little bit more of a clean cut overdrive because I'm not the cleanest player, especially when we're playing fast. And the cleaner the amp for me, the more forgiving it is in a way. I find with a lot of distortion or the type of distortion, sometimes it can make you sound messier. Um, and Rob's a very clean player as well, so this amp's perfect for him. But that being said, this amplifier Definitely, I'd, I'd give this for me seven out of ten personally. Um, it's uh, it looks beautiful as well, nice and understated. You wouldn't know it's Rob's signature to be fair. Um, you can pick these up for about eighteen hundred quid, I think. 
And for a British handwide amplifier with that kind of feature set in it as well, not just a straightforward two channel amp, it's actually more like a four channel because you've got clean, then a clean boost kind of crunch sound, then your overdrive, then a boost sound. Which isn't just the shred, it actually, as you heard, it does a lot of cool rhythm sounds too. And you've got overdrive, you've got two masters, shared EQ, dry and wet signal blend, um, it just kicks ass, to be honest. And the trapdoor, and the guard to, to stop you from knocking the controls off. So with all that packed into one little box like that, I think 1800 quid is quite modest, personally. Um, some of you might you know, say that's not the case, but for me, I think, you know what, if you're going to spend a chunk of money on an amplifier, this wouldn't be a bad option, in my opinion. And I'm not just saying that because Rob's my best mate, it's because like, I, I, I do think it's a very well engineered amplifier and there's been a lot of time, care and attention that's gone into it too. So yeah, I hope that was insightful enough for you. I hope um, you know that I made it sound good. I hope Rob enjoys this. Um, but anyway, thanks Rob for letting me do a quick demo of it. And you know, I think well done on you, man. I think I'm really proud of you as a friend to say that you've got your own signature amp that you can buy all over the world and stuff. Um, I think it's really awesome. So well done. And uh, yeah, I will be back soon with more epicness of video form. Anyway. Catch you soon.